Hey, Coach Rianzo with B2B Lax. We want to go over slow break defense. But first of all, what is a slow break? A fast break is a four on three going from defense to offense. And a slow break is pretty much any other situation transitioning from defense to offense. So it could be a five on four, could be a six on four, could be a six on five. And even in a lot of situations, it could be a six on six where the defense isn't quite set yet. So that's what a slow break is. So some BTB keys to keep in mind when you're defending a slow break. First and foremost, just like a fast break, we want to buy time. The whole idea defensively is to buy some time for our teammates to get in there, our fellow defenders to get in there, that fifth and sixth guy, so that we can number up and play settled defense, six on six defense. In order to do that, one way is to force extra passes. We want to pack it in, stay nice and tight, but we also want to force extra passes. If we force them to make a second or a third or a fourth pass, that's more seconds that allows our defensive teammates to get in and help us defend and number up. Also, another thing that force and extra passes can do is force them to make a turnover, throw it out of bounds, mishandle the ball. We might be able to scoop it up and go the other way. Okay? So when we're talking about a slow break uh, defensively, we need to identify the situation. Okay? So we need to identify it's not a fast break and there's a transition opportunity for the offense occurring that we need to defend. So if it's a five on four, six on four, six on five, we're gonna call out slow break. We're gonna communicate to our teammates. Just because you know that it's a slow break doesn't mean that your teammates do. And there's a lot of field to cover when we're dealing with the slow break. It's basically the whole half of the field that we need to defend. Okay, so at BTB, we, we call out slow break first, but then we're gonna call out box it up. That tells our, our teammates, tells everybody where they need to line up and the exact positioning that they're gonna to go to. Those are the two things that we communicate. So slow break, box it up, and then where you're gonna be. And let me give you an example. So in this scenario here, we've transitioned from defense to offense. Okay, the offense is in blue. The defense is now in that box it up uh, situation. Okay, they're positioned in the right spots. Okay, and this midfielder, he's in the top left spot. This defender's in the bottom left spot. We're looking at it as we're looking away from the goal. Okay, he's in the bottom right spot and he's in the top right spot. So as we're transitioning, the defensive guys will be up by the midfield line when the ball's down here. As the ball comes down, the defenders are gonna sprint in and we'll talk about that in a second. And they're gonna to get to these spots, but the communication should sound something like this. Slow break, box it up, I've got bottom left. Or slow break, box it up, I've got top left. Something along those lines. So we're all communicating, all four of these guys should be saying something very similar, except for they're calling out a different spot. That helps them work through who should be where. These two low guys are gonna be lined up about three, two or three yards above the goal and about three to four yards outside, okay? Same thing on this side. And these guys wanna be nice and tight. To scale, they're probably out a little bit far as I've drawn them here. They wanna be at about 13 yards, so maybe in a little bit tighter, okay? So 13 yards from the goal and then about five or six yards out. But we're in a nice tight square or a box, okay? And like I said, we need, when we're converting, when we're, the defensemen are up here at the midfield line and even the middies getting back in, they're gonna sprint in as hard as they possibly can as they're communicating their position and, and what the situation is. And they're always keeping their head turned to the ball. Never wanna turn your back on the ball. That's essential to remember. Okay, another BTB key. As we're in this box, and if you watched our fast break video, we said something similar as it regards to fast break. But now we're in a box instead of a triangle. We want to imagine that there's a string attaching all four of these defenders. So as one defender moves, the other ones are going to move in tandem, okay, um, as one unit. And that's something to keep in mind, and we'll touch on that in a second. Okay, now as we get in, right now we've got four defenders. This midfielder here was the first midi. Okay, 1M, he's the first midi. He's gonna be the one that makes this a box it up situation. He makes, he's the fourth defender. So that first midi, when he gets in, he's gonna occupy one of these two top spots and he's gonna have to work it out with this point defenseman. They could be switched depending upon where on the field they are and how they get into this scenario. Okay, but this midfielder usually is gonna occupy one of the top two spots. Okay, so that first midi, makes it a, a, a box it up scenario. When we get a second midi in the mix, we're gonna get what we call dice. That second midi, let's say he's back here and he outruns these middies and he gets in, but it's now a six on five. 
because blue's got six guys and red only has five. Okay, instead of just standing up top staring at people not knowing what to do, he's going he's gonna to know because he's the second midi in, he's the dice position. Okay, so he's going to go to the middle and he's going to have crease responsibility. And again, there's a lot of zone qualities which we'll touch on in a second. But as they get set in this six on five, it's going to look like this. And now it's dice. Okay, and we call it dice because it's kind of like the five spots on a die. Okay, easy to remember. So we've got box it up when there's just four, and we've got dice when it's five. It's really easy to remember. Players know where they're supposed to go because you've prepared them, and, and the, uh, the directions sound like the positions they're supposed to go to on the field. So that's very helpful. Okay, so that second midi occupies the dice spot, which is that kind of that crease responsibility. Okay, that third midi, when he gets in, Maybe he fell down or he was going after a ground ball or he took a shot and ended up down here or he got hit, what have you. When that six midi gets in, he's going to call out numbers, okay? And that tells the rest of his teammates that we've got six guys in there and they should all call out a jersey number of the person that they're guarding so that everybody's marked up. We don't have two guys guarding one. I've got number 15. I've got number 16. All right, so everybody's marked up so they know who they're supposed to be guarding. He doesn't call numbers until he's in there. Okay, he doesn't want to call it when he's all the way out here. Once he gets in, inside the defensive zone and underneath the offensive players, then he calls out numbers. Okay, so that third midi is the numbers guy. So once we get in with that third midi, we've now got six guys and we, we need to go out and guard somebody. He'll go here, he'll go here. He might have to go guard an attackman for the time being. You know, we'll just, we'll mark up whoever's closest to us. Don't worry about matchups too much. Just get numbers, get on a guy so we don't give up any unsettled goals. Okay, now let's go back to the uh, six on four scenario, the box it up. We're just gonna make this as simple as possible, okay, and how we defend this. There's a lot of zone qualities, which we talked about for a second earlier. So we're basically playing zone. We're not guarding a man. Let's bring these offensive middies in a little bit tighter now. Okay, let's assume this midi still has the ball up top, and now we've got a, a fifth midi. So it's a five on four situation. All right, so we're just playing in a box, zone qualities. All right, we obviously need to stop the ball. So if he carries it in, this midfielder is going to stop the ball here. Okay, maybe they pass it here. Okay, we might have to play the ball here softly, okay, because we don't want to get extended out too far. Okay, they move the ball to X. We're still keeping the shape of the square, of the box it up. Okay, let me erase these lines here. All right, so the ball's back here now. And this is a key part of slow break defense. To know how to defend, it's pretty easy when the ball's up top. We've got a lot of zone qualities. Okay, we can just guard a man if he's in our, in our general area. But when the ball goes behind, who guards the ball behind? Okay, that's always a big question. Well, we, how we play it at BTB is that we just hold the corners with these two low defensemen. Okay, so whichever way this attackman goes, we're gonna guard him with that low defenseman. So if he pulls to his right hand, we're gonna come down with this defenseman there. And remember what I said earlier about having that imaginary string attaching all four guys. So as, as this attackman carries it right, we come down with this defender, meet him at goal line extended, Okay, this defenseman needs to move now because otherwise they're just going to get one pass in a shot. So he's going to come down a little bit. Okay, this defender kind of comes to the middle. He comes to the middle a little bit. Okay, and we're just watching those skip passes through. But as he comes away from, uh, down from X, we're guarding from this low corner. We're coming down. Okay, and now let's, let's go the other way with it. If this attackman, instead of going right-handed, decided to go left-handed comes back the way the ball came. We're just coming down with this defender. This midi's gonna come down a little bit, get ready to come out here if he needs to. Okay, and we're just gonna come down a little bit here. Okay, so that's basics. So as they're coming from X, we're gonna just hold the corner with that defender. Now, let's get a little bit, a little bit more advanced. We're gonna fold the corner. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so as the attackman comes from X, and we're stopping him with this defenseman, Who's guarding the crease, okay? Folding the corner means you look at it as a box, almost as a piece of paper, 
okay? The farthest guy from the ball, we fold the corner of the paper, he's coming down, okay? So he's responsible for the crease. So anytime we've got a guy driving from X, or even if they're driving from up top, we want to fold the corner and bring the opposite guy to have crease responsibility. So let me erase this and it just kind of show it to you a little bit differently. So in this scenario, the ball is coming this way. Okay, this is the farthest man from the ball, so he's got crease responsibility. Okay, so he's going to actually go down and guard the crease. Now let's say he pulls to his left and then changes course and goes back this way. Okay, this defender would have been in. He'll then pop out, and then this guy becomes the farthest away from the ball. So we'll erase that, and now he has to get in and guard the crease. So there's a lot of in and out that goes from the crease back out to the perimeter. And show that to you just one more time in a different location. Let's say as they come down, and instead of, i got to replace my guys here. Okay, instead of passing the ball down the side, maybe he just comes across with it and he cuts to the crease. Okay, so now we've got something like this. Now that would be kind of an unconventional play, but stuff like that happens all the time. Okay, so now the ball is here and they start to push the cage from here. Okay, we would fold the corner with the farthest guy from the ball, which is here. So he has crease responsibility. So we're still in a box, but we're folding the corner to guard the crease so that once they get a crease guy in there, we've got him covered. Okay, and if they move the ball behind or down the side, okay, he no longer becomes the guy that's on the crease. He pops out. It becomes this guy guarding the crease. Okay, that's a little bit complex, but once you get to the high school levels, you should be able to pull this off no problem. Okay, and remember, it's a lot of zone qualities when you're doing slow break defense. So we're in a box it up situation now, playing a lot of zone qualities. We get that, that uh, fifth defender in there, and okay, now we're dice. Okay, so we're just playing a zone with one guy in the middle. And when we get that sixth guy in there, we go numbers and we're all even. All right, so that's slow break defense. Did you know that there's just two simple things that separate the average youth and high school lacrosse player from the elite guys that are ready to go on to play in college and beyond? Yep, just two simple things. We teamed up with college All-American and multiple MLL All-Star Mike Kimmel to put together a completely free 45 minute long three-part video training series that's going to show kids and parents exactly what those two things are, what you need to be working on if you want to take your game to the next level. And nope, it's got nothing to do with hitting the gym or running till you puke. If you're serious about improving as a player and you want to become one of the best guys on your team, get more playing time, and catch the eye of college recruiters, you have to see this free video training. Just click the link below in the description of this video and you'll be taken to a page where you can ask to receive instant access to these free videos. Join the thousands of high school and youth players that have already seen Mike's awesome training and take control of your game today.